A user calls in and they can't get into their account and you see that their account is disabled. Should you just re-enable that account right away to get that user functioning once again? Probably not and this is something that we see in IT time and time again. Guys, my name is Jake. I'm a systems administrator at an MSP. An MSP is a managed service provider so we give IT services to other companies, specifically financial institutions, banks and credit unions. So our security stack is, uh, we, we use defense in depth and we have a lot of security tools and we're very careful about staying in compliance about things. Um, and I have a lot of people reach out to me for help with tickets that aren't necessarily my tickets. So the ticket that I'm going to describe today was a ticket that was a tier one, had someone call in and had two users that were disabled and like they weren't sure why they were like re-enable these users. I was very careful about telling this tier one, if we don't know why a user is disabled, we need to be careful about re-enabling them. Why is that? Well, firstly, it happens in corporate world where people get fired and they don't know it yet, right? Like, uh, I don't know, Pablo was fired from his job and HR just hasn't had the meeting with him quite yet. Like, they're having it at 1 p.m. or something like that. And Pablo just doesn't know it yet. Like he's out on lunch. Uh, he comes back a little bit early from lunch and then he calls in. He's like, hey, enable me so I can do X, Y, Z. He's supposed to be blocked out of the system. So you have to be careful for that reason. Um, and then secondarily, we also have tools that auto disable accounts when sketchy stuff is happening. Okay. You have automated actions uh, that'll disable accounts if, for example, somebody logs in from Texas and then in the next minute, there's a login from China. That is a behavior that would be like, hey, this is risky enough that maybe a security tool would automatically disable that account. Is it a good thing if you just re-enable the account? Probably not. Now, of course, we have tons of other security measures in place. We have uh, multi-factor authentication. We have different conditional access policies. We have DNS filtering. We have endpoint detection and response. We have managed detection and response of a bunch of different kinds. And we also have a SIM that automatically creates tickets when this crazy type of behavior happens. Um, and those tickets need to be reviewed by somebody who's more well-versed in security, okay? So I was quick about telling the tier one, hey, hold off on actually re-enabling these accounts Let's look and see if we have a security related ticket that's related to this event that has to do with this account. Um, and to be honest with you, usually it is a false positive, which is just fine. Okay. It's, it's, it's okay if a security system disables someone's account when it's actually not sketchy behavior, uh, because you'd rather a false positive than a false negative. That is an attacker actually compromises someone and logs in from two weird locations at the same time and is in from China and our security stack doesn't alert on it. There's a good balance of false positives and um, that you want to have, right? In order to have a security stack, there's going to be some things to the user that's not as easy to do their job. Multi-factor authentication is one of those things. Like it sounds trivial, but every time you log in, you got to put in another multi-factor authentication code. And that's just another thing that the user has to do. So important to keep in mind. Now, I also want you to consider other things with regard to security. And these are things that we see all the time. Hey, user got a sketchy email. Um, they think that they were fished. Again, we have all of these other compensating controls in place for those users, but it's important what actually happened with that email. Did they just receive it? Because just receiving an email that's fishy isn't necessarily something that you're, you should be extremely worried about with regard to security. Of course, you can investigate and you can you can say, hey, I'm pretty sure this is a phishing email. You know, it's got malicious attachments. I'm pretty sure this isn't a phishing email because of XYZ. So you can definitely discuss that and and, and look it over as an, as an IT professional and give the user some confidence like, hey, you need to block this sender so that they can't send you email anymore. Um, that's something that we do all the time. But then there's the other consideration. Did the user actually put their credentials in? You know, maybe they got a, Microsoft, a fake Microsoft splash page from a, a external domain. And yes, Microsoft appends that message that's like, hey, be really careful. This is an external domain. But if you know, you know, users will do some crazy things. Sometimes they will, they'll put credentials in without thinking, and then they'll get really worried. Like, hey, my account's been compromised. Again, where you want those compensating controls, like multi-factor authentication, conditional access, all those types of things. But if somebody put their credentials in, that's probably a situation where it's like, all right, now we're looking into uh, resetting passwords, um, getting everything else set up again, just, you know, maybe running a defender scan on the endpoint to ensure that nothing malicious is actually downloaded um, and going from there. If we think something might have been downloaded and we've remediated it to the best of our ability, but there's still a sliver of doubt, it might get to a point where you say, hey, you need to re-image this PC before you use it again. You know, like we have the Microsoft identity side of things down, but this PC needs to be re-imaged just to be sure. Um, and of course, all of that goes into incident response as well. Like if there's a true security incident where it's like, hey, we think that there actually was a compromise. I don't know. They didn't have conditional access set up or didn't have MFA, which is not something we see with our companies because again, we're so heavily regulated, but you do see uh, in the general IT world, you know, maybe there's more of an incident response type thing where, hey, we're digging, we're figuring out what data did they get? Um, what are we going to do about it? That costs a lot of money. Incident response costs a lot of money. So it's better to have a gazillion compensating controls that you can still work with than it is to actually get hacked and ransomware and you have to do this IR and it's costing you tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the size of the company. Now I got a little bit long winded with this ticket. The ticket was fundamentally two users got disabled. We didn't know why. T1's in 
initial response was to, he wanted to re-enable those accounts. And he was like, hey, Jake, can I re-enable these? I'm telling you this ticket just because you gotta be careful. Anything that's odd that happens in IT should probably be root caused. You should probably try and figure out why it happened. And oftentimes I've just seen time and time again with accounts getting disabled, it's often because of a security tool and there's a reason or somebody got fired and they don't know it yet, which that's the reason. So don't arbitrarily re-enable a disabled account if you don't know why. Now the T1 did not do this. He reached out to me, which I was very happy about. And I gave him this whole spiel and I spoke with him and he was uh, really, it was a good learning experience, I think. Um, I recall when people first told me all of this. So, and I was just a little, I was just a T1 who wanted to solve issues. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, like you just want to get your users back up and running. You want to get things functional again. You want to get them out of this stressful situation where they can work. So it's always a balance between security and functionality with your users. Appreciate you guys for all of the support lately. Thank you so much. I'm going to continue making this series where I'm talking about my real life tickets uh, because I think it's interesting and I, I've seen a lot of demand for it. These are not edited videos. They're not um, heavily cut videos and I'm not throwing visuals on the, on the screen or anything of that sort. Just because of ease of making the videos, I can film two, three, four in a day and I can get more content out for you guys while still working a full-time job. I appreciate everything. Thank you guys so much. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions. And the next time a user calls in and they have a disabled account, don't just arbitrarily re-enable it. Bye.